everybody back here to the Martini Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY of the City University in New York in the middle of Manhattan in Midtown, close to the New York Public Library where the lions also seem to have been sleeping on the steps uh, of the library. And one has the feeling that they are also slowly looking around in, in the city that is awakening. And it's a beautiful summer day, very hot in parts of America is experiencing extreme heat. And, um, and in one way also, we do experience that because it's the time of Corona in one way is coming to an end, still many open questions, what will happen? Um, will uh, uh, mutations of the virus uh, stay with us? Uh, we hear this horrible news uh, from India. We're actually going to do a 24 hour day dedicated to theater artists in India who are staying up days and nights to connect the, the uh, people around the, the cities uh, with the few hospital beds that are available. It's incredibly heartbreaking what we hear from there, but still here and in Germany, France, in Italy, things are moving ahead. And, um, uh, but it is now the time we have talked so much about in our last 160, 70 uh, sessions. What is going to happen when this time is over? What have we learned uh, about us? Uh, what will we do differently? And so many expressed that what was there was not perfect, it was not right, it actually needed to change, especially here in the US. And um, for our fellow artists from around the world, we have now talked to almost 200 people from 50 countries. So it is an important uh, contribution from everyone um, we hear. But um, today um, we have a special uh, company with us, a very important company. Um, one of the very few companies that left an imprint that changed uh, when they performed. If world of theater, performance, dance, or Tanztheater was different. The idea that like the Berliner Ensemble with the three, with the Mother Courage and Brecht directed changed theater. I think Grotowski changed theater when you saw what is it, Peter Brook, Nushkin, there's something different. So many great artists, Virginia Barba, who was here with us, things were different. And one of those uh, companies who ate a bit from the apple of the tree of enlightenment um, is the great Pina Bausch uh, Dance Theater Company. They are here with us. And uh, we talked to so many artists, emerging artists, unknown, known. And, and today in that whole puzzle of uh, this mosaic, uh, we have um, with us two of the um, great, who one, what, what could one say? Artists, warriors uh, for, for theater, for dance. And with us, it is uh, Bettina Wagner Bergelt and Elena Picon, or Hélène, as she said, but Pina called her once. Um, so both of you, thank you so much. It's a big honor to have you uh, with us. And where are you and what time is it? Elena, maybe you, Elena, you can start. Thank you very much. Uh, I am in Wuppertal. I, I am in Germany, Nordrhein-Westfalen, near from Düsseldorf. And uh, it is uh, still very... Uh, Clear here, it's 18, uh, it's six o'clock in the evening. Uh, yes, but it's uh, still very, very clear weather. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I am a German yeah. at home. Bettina, where are you? I'm presently in my home office. Uh -huh. And um, I was uh, in Wuppertal yesterday and I came back during the night because we had a general rehearsal yesterday evening. Um, the weather's the same, it's only one hour uh, away from Wuppertal, so it's the same situation, but it's getting darker, maybe we, we expect some rain, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> What's the town you're in? Um, it's Herford. Uh -huh. how, 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 how wonderful, so you live a little bit outside or uh, No, that's the imagine? place where my, where my family stays and um, I went oh. there for, for Oh, you went there. Good, yeah. good, good. So you all have, so must have had so many Zoom talks in that home office of yours. Yes, so home office everywhere. Everywhere, so, yeah. yeah. Wherever we were, we could do home office. That was oh, home, office, uh, home office, yeah. So um, um, what, an, uh, what a time uh, to run a dance uh, uh, theater company. Um, so we can't wait to hear both of you, how you experience this year, what it means more about your company, what your plans are. For our um, uh, listeners, nobody now needs an introduction 
Tupina Bausch and her great work, her groundbreaking work. She was so beloved in New York City, also had strong roots of coming from the Juilliard School here and being part of New York City Ballet and having a lifelong engagement, especially in BAM with the great Joe Melillo. I think there was a long going uh, um, a collaboration, but um, let me introduce my two guests so we get a little bit more of an idea. Bettina Wagner-Bergeld uh, is at the Tanztheater Wuppertal Pina Bausch, this is the name of the company, since 2019. And before that, she was the deputy director of the Bavarian States Ballet um, for 15, 16 years. Before that, she was the head dramaturg. And um, so this is also something we can talk about, the idea of the dramaturgy mm -hmm. for dance. And we talk about change, and we talk about uh, new forms of engagement. <clears throat> this is something this company um, uh, pioneered with Bettina um, at the site. Raimund Hogo, of course, also um, <clears throat> is uh, well known for, for having had that engagement and uh, it became a model, I think, worldwide to think differently about dramaturgy and also uh, what it means in dance, because traditionally, and especially in the US, dramaturgy is, you know, re-helping to someone rewrite the third act and do some PR outreach and, uh, you know, and uh, go out for a beer with the director or the actor or something goes wrong. But no, this is a very serious engagement. And they did that. She um, built up a Bettina in Munich, an outstanding and really highly respected uh, international repertoire of modern and avant-garde works. And uh, she created Campus Staatsballett, Campus State Ballet, um, interdisciplinary outreach, outreach program for dance and ballet. So something also we put here, what her ideas are, what she thinks, um, what theater is about, and dance and da tanz theater, where it all comes together. She created, that's what she was known for in the very beginning, the Munich Festival Dance, the Internationales Tanz Festival, and she was, of course, its artistic uh, director. So in a time in the 80s, uh, when so many things changed and came up uh, in Germany, um, she was part of that movement that brought change. Uh, Elena or Helena Picon or Hélène, as uh, Pina Bausch said, uh, is, uh, began dancing professionally in 1975. She is truly an experienced artist who has seen a lot of the world's stages, experienced uh, um, the ups and downs and, 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 and ways of, uh, like as someone said, it's like water. You have little water running down a table. It goes in curves, it never goes straight. So she has been with the company for such a long time and very few know the company better. So it's a big honor to have her uh, with uh, us. She started out dancing with Jacques uh, Patarozzi and the company Le Mans. And in 1981, this is early, Pina Bausch invited her to join the ensemble as a permanent member, which um, can be compared when the queen, you know, takes out her sword and gives a, 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 a title, you know, to a, a nobleman uh, who then all of a sudden is at the court uh, in the center of the universe. It's like a, a center of Versailles as the king. So it's incredible. And she was part of the original cast of Walzer Carnations on the mountains a cry we hear, we heard, cigarettes in the dark, but it goes on and on, the children of yesterday, uh, today and tomorrow, Sweet Mambo and Bon Voyage, so many, many works, you can um, look that up. She also appeared in the Pina Bosch film, The Complaint of the Empress, and of course, in Wim Wenders' film, significant film, a beloved film that also crossed and created a new audience, his film, Pina. So, Thank you both for coming. Um, it's a big honor and um, maybe give us an idea. Uh, and we start uh, with Bettina, who is also a rehearsal director for the company, uh, we, like we taking care of existing pieces, you know, like, uh, you know, in museums or in a way, some of paintings that don't have to be in good condition, but on the company, they are alive, they're dancers. It's, Things change, theater is unique, it's every evening, even if you have the same company, so it's quite a challenge. So Bettina um, and uh, Elena, we really would like to hear from you. How did a company like yours experienced um, last year, the time of Corona? Elena, give us a little, a little update. How did you also feel as an artist? Oh, uh, so um, yeah, it was uh, something we, we were not prepared, of course, it's stupid to say this, but it was really a shock for that. And uh, 
So I, I, Bettina gives us a lot of chance, actually, as artists to, to try things. Uh, she gives us a lot of opportunities to try things. And it was for me a chance to begin to do something with Sidila Bisherkawi, the choreograph in uh, Belgium, in Antwerpen. So I begin to work with him. And then suddenly it was this corona uh, terrible things. So where you were in Belgium rehearsing was, a new piece or taking care of a piece? Yes. And I then was, you got an email, a call, or what happened? Yeah, I was in Belgium two, three times already to begin a creation with him. He invited me as dancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was very happy to, to work with him and to begin to work with him and to know him a bit more. And then it was happening these things. And we come back to, I come back. Uh, to, to Wuppertal and actually it was uh, it was finished it was just like that and uh, she, Bettina gave me also the possibility to work with Lucien Ayan Oyen uh, who has made uh, Bon Voyage Bob uh, some years ago and uh, <clears throat> he wanted me for a creation in uh, Paris Opera as a dancer also as participating uh, dancer and the same thing I begin uh, some one week somehow two years and it was uh, after a while I could not go back because it was finished uh, everything uh, stopped so for me it was a pity because I am now uh, I am not a young dancer and I am quite in a ending for my career and uh, it was very beautiful uh, what I could have uh, expect or what I could have tried and it was just like suspending and finish. The but, city of um, Wuppertal said everything is closed, uh, stay at home. And, yes, uh, it was, I mean, Bettina maybe can say much more about this, how it's really happened. Uh, because she's yeah, Bettina, really maybe in, tell us, yeah, how, yeah. how was the moment for you? Um, where, well, it where was were you? actually, it was a terrible moment. We had just uh, begun a series of seven deadly sins of, by Pina, um, because I concentrated, I decided very early to concentrate on restaging pieces of the 70s, which hadn't been done for a long, long time, most of them. Um, and uh, Seven Deadly Sins was one of the, of the important pieces of the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just started to rehearse and then the corona was already like in the public discourse. And then in March, suddenly after the second performance, I think second or third performance, we had Ute Lemper from New York to, to, to sing the main part. And uh, we had to stop immediately and uh, we got the information from the city government that we have to, to stop being together in the studio, to stop being together on stage. No spectator was allowed anymore in the, in the, in the theater. And of course, nobody knew what that means. I mean, it was like an emergency. And um, we said, OK, it's maybe for a week or two or three. And nobody knew that it would really stay like one and a half year. I think we're now... Uh, we have 15 or 16 months now, this situation. And um, it was a pity. We were supposed to go to Paris with this piece afterwards. It's with, with big orchestra. It's a Brecht piece, you know. Uh, it's a huge cast with uh, way over 20 people on stage and singers, actors, a big orchestra, um, the Kurt Weill music. And it was, yeah, it had, also, it had to be canceled. And of course, uh, our partner in Paris, uh, Claire Verlet from Théâtre de la Ville, uh, she was desperate because um, they had rented another theater. I think it was the Châtelet where we su were supposed to, uh, to perform it. And um, yeah, it, it, it all stopped suddenly. And we were all confused, of course. A lot of people were afraid because you, had, you heard so many rumors how, how dangerous this, this um, um, epidemic is. And um, so, yeah, that was the beginning. And then what we did was mainly um, to adapt to the situation step by step. And we decided very early, we have one colleague, she really like specialized in Corona during these 15, 16 months. Um, she tried to get all the information and also in a, not only in a serious way, but also in a, um, um, in a, in a reasonable way, you know, not panic, not overdo, not exaggerate, but, make sure we do certain steps and keep the company safe, keep it also quiet. They don't, we, did, we didn't want to make anybody get into panic because we have a lot of people who 
don't have their, their families with them. They, they live in a foreign country still for many, many years. Some of them are young, the others are older, but they all have the special situations also at home. So we had to take care of all this and um, yeah, we adapted uh, step by step. And as Helena said, um, at that time we prepared a creation with Sidi Labi Chakawi and four other choreographers. They had all started to work. Helena was in the piece uh, by Sidi Labi. Actually, to talk about dramaturgy, because you mentioned it before, um, I wanted it um, to be an encounter. It was the title also, an encounter of five artists working with the tradition, also the body memory of, of Pina, and somehow get all these dancers from this tradition to work in their style. And they, the five people had a totally different style. And they were supposed to, for the first time also in their life, work on one evening together, not uh, 20 minutes each, but to make a piece, create a piece together where, where lines were laid and, and little tracks from one to the other uh, about encountering the, 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 the other. And that was the idea behind it. And Helena had just started, as she said before, to work with uh, Sidi Labish Takawi. And then she had to come back and uh, the second project that she wanted to do, um, which is also part of the company policy now that people get the chance to work with other artists. We now have somebody who's working with Bob Wilson the next season. And, um, and that's my, uh, my maybe a little, yeah, really, really a new step into a new politics that um, the company not only opens up to other countries as Pina did for a long, long time, working with uh, in collaboration with other countries, other cities in the world. Uh, I also try to support the dancers in making new um, experiences in um, meeting artists and working with them and get new ideas of how working processes um, can be mm -hmm. and how they can participate and contribute to that with other artists because Pina is mm -hmm. not there anymore. It's so. not there. In incredible though. A train that, of course, was not easy to easy to push on again after Pina Baus passing, and um, is then kind of running. You know, seven deadly sins, five even five choreographers, one evening at the end. You have zero. You cannot show it. You know, and um, no that's in, in, incredible. Um, Hel Elena, if you could give us a little idea, I mean, Bettina kind of hinted at it. We don't really know what is the company. How many dancers do you have a theater? Um, how many people work for it? Do you have rehearsals? Such could you paint a little bit? Um, how 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 does the Pina Bausch uh, Tanztheater uh, company look like? Yeah, actually, we are like about 32 dancers, and then there is uh, also the technique and the, the bureau and everybody together, the people working on stage. It's about like 70 uh, people together, the, queue, the crew. Um, so there is some people who are uh, a rehearsal director to help also all the pieces from Pina to the stage, the pieces. Uh, of course, there is about like 40, 42 or 40 more. I don't know exactly, I don't remember really, but uh, it's a lot of pieces from Pina and uh, we doesn't have restaged everything until now, but we have quite restaged uh, some. And um, so it is a collaborating work. We cannot work uh, separately. And uh, I think because people are, some people are still in this company, some people who are working with Pina, some long times and some new dancer. And so we, uh, we, it's necessary to pass the role, to give role, to, to include the dancer, to give them this uh, beautiful work from Pina. And uh, for that, we need also the, um, the memories uh, from the dancers and uh, for giving the roles. And so it's very much a collaborating uh, work. And you have a theater of your own, a, a, a theater, a rehearsal stages, or you, you're a guest. How does it work? Maybe Bettina. You, no. You, you'd... Yes. Um, no. We we have we have the opera house. Actually, there were two houses: the Schauspielhaus and the opera house, where Pina both in Wuppertal, created, right? In Wuppertal, yes, the existing Wuppertal. city theater. Yes, she State always theater. stayed in Wuppertal. She was offered this job at, as a as an artistic director and uh, choreographer in chief in '73 in Wuppertal by a very very. 
uh, courageous uh, intendant director um, and um, she stayed there. She had offers to come to Paris. She had offers to go to other cities. They wanted to subsidize her and she never said yes. She wanted to stay in Wuppertal because she loved this city because of its special uh, flair, its special atmosphere, because it had this, this mixture of a very, very um, wealthy industrial past um, of producing um, um, bêtement, c'est quoi? Oh, no, oh, uh, clothing? Clothing, right. And they had special techniques and everything. It was the, the most wealthy uh, city in Germany, actually, around the 19th to the 20th century. So she loved this city because she always said it's an everyday city. It's not something fancy. It's not elegant. It's, uh, it's people who look um, tired sometimes. There are people who look sad. There are people that are poor. It's a good mixture. And she loved this atmosphere. And obviously, it inspired her very much for her pieces also. And mm -hmm. what she, on, she, she had an equivalent on the other side because she had all these collaborations with Japan, with Chile, with, with um, Brazil, and with Hungary, and with very, very many countries and cities in the world, Portugal and Lisbon. And uh, so this was this, uh, it was a balance, I think, of both staying there and being very stable, and on the other hand, go out into the world and exchange uh, ideas and working uh, experience with other people uh, do research on how do people live what makes what is different from us what is the same where are we where do we resemble each other and where are gaps that we don't know about even and and uh, maybe totally different political situations also so this was um, her um, her, her starting point in a way and um, and this is still what what the company where the company is and as helena said we have half of the company who worked with pina um, and the other half who are new dancers and they are getting more and more of course and uh, it's a beautiful task that helena and her generation have to on the one hand pass their roles over to to the young generation and work with them on the roles and on the other hand, also staged the pieces, the more than 44 pieces that she created. And um, um, that's a wonderful work, I think. And apart mm -hmm. from that, uh, we are now also concentrating on a lot of other things like opening the company to the region, to festivals in the region. We try to do collaborations. And I'm also very much interested in supporting young artists and give them the chance because Pina has such a name, you know, to work with Tanztheater. It's like twice a week that I get a, a, a question, an email. Can can I work with you? Can I have a I have a scholarship? Can I stay with a company? Can I dance with a company mm -hmm. or uh, have an apprenticeship and stuff like that? And I try very much to um, to 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 be positive and and try to give all these people a chance these artists young artists and students and scientists yeah. and historians yeah. and uh, and this is very exciting in a way and i think this is also something new after the 10 years after pina's death uh, there was no one to take care of things like that and as i'm a dramaturg and i've done a lot of things in munich already i think it's also good for the company to have this exchange right now we mm -hmm. we have somebody from new york she has a a Fulbright uh, uh, scholarship, and she will start next season to work with Who's us. That? Um, it, she's called uh, Samantha Shays. She's uh -huh. a young filmmaker. And, and will be uh, with us, with you. It's incredible. I mean, I have met dancers when we talk about theater, and when they talk about uh, Pina Bosch and the Wuppertal Tanztheater and the conditions, they actually have tears in their eyes. Yeah. And they say, I wish, you know, I wish so much we had anything like this. And, and they are so touched by the work, but also by the condition. So you're a kind of a model. You invented almost a, the company, a field um, in, in theater. And Wuppertal is an, yeah, an interesting city. It would be in the U.S. if someone says, well, yes, I'd rather stay, um, I don't know, in, in, in Philadelphia. I don't want to be in Los Angeles or in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I think George Tabori also for a while was there. So there. Um, yeah. Um, it's quite an interesting uh, um, uh, a place for a while. It was it just showed yeah. it depends on people, as you said, you know, that Absolutely. intendant who, who brought them over and that she said yeah. perhaps her work 
can flourish more there than in a big yeah. busy metropolis. What many people talk in the Siegel talks about that perhaps to develop a unique style, it's better to be outside um, yeah, the it very is, big noise. And mm -hmm. it is not a Sunday city. I don't know how to say it in, in, in English really good, but Pina was saying it's not a city for a Sunday. It's really a working city, like Bettina says. And the person, uh, um, the name from this person who invited Pina was Arno Wüstener, this uh, intendant. You have seen her, of course, in the uh, in the Wolfgang, uh, Wolfgang uh, um, uh, Schule in Essen. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was already making some, some creation and some solos. And he was really giving to this young artist uh, the possibility to be the the director from the ballet from Wuppertal at this time. And it's, of course, for the, mm -hmm. for the time, it was very much, uh, there were a lot of people left, of course, when Pina came and some other, they stay and they stay a very, very long time. Like Jan Minarek, for example, who were really, really a very big, important companion from, from work uh, with Pina incredible uh, mm -hmm. actor and dancer and actor. Well, if we could ask what does for you Elena, what does Pina Bausch's work mean for you what what was the essence of it what made you stay with it what uh, is it all about oh it's a big question <laughs> and for for me um, Pina for me she doesn't uh, give to the people what they want to have maybe I make it a short way now but she gives them the possibility to accept what they feel. Because on stage, uh, I have an example, for example, incarnations. We have Dominique Merci asking to the people, to the public, what do you want to see? What do you want to see more? Do you want to see pirouette? Do you want to see, I can do it, I can do it. And actually, there is some people who maybe would like to see, but maybe other people, they really feel, Oh, I'm always asked like that also to show things which I'm not. And maybe, I mean, I, I of course, every people has her own understanding from the piece of Pina because she never say what it is. She never explain it. And maybe someone else has another understanding from that. But for me, she's really a person who gives the possibility to the person, to the public to accept what he feels. On, on, to see someone on stage. And it's not a question from acting. It's a really uh, uh, something from uh, giving. It's a theater for people. It's not a theater or a the dance theater for us. It's a theater on a dance theater for, 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 for people. It's from to go out and to have a, a sharing things. And this is for me very, very important because um, I, I began very late to dance, and uh, this was uh, what she, what I feel of her. She, she gave me the possibility to be myself. She gave me the possibility to discover who I am. She gave me the possibility to go over things which I maybe never thought I can do, or never really feel, and not to be ashamed to feel things, to say things with my body, or. Um, Oh, I have a lot of things together coming mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really uh, a real, a real, real uh, you can feel you are, you have the right to feel what you feel. You have the right to, uh, to do, to share with the public. And I think it's a kind of, of course, identification. For example, if I dance, because I'm not interested in just to dance for dancing, me personally, uh, I want to share. I want to share and I want to be the person who are sitting in the public. I want to be that this person is me in a way. You know what I mean? That we can exchange our a kind of identification. And I really feel it's important to have this. So this person sitting there, maybe she has a lot of crying inside of her or something like this. And I want to be this person for her. I want to, mm. because we are same in a lot of ways. And that's why it was incredible to go in so, with so many uh, different country where we see human people are not so much different in a lot of uh, feeling. Of mm. course, you have something stopping you because your education, but even in Japan, in Japan, uh, people was, were very uh, touched. And for example, last time we have done Contents with Mia, Condense with Me, um, 
people were there crying. Japanese mm. people who sing, they never cry in, front Very of, rarely, in yeah. public. So how was it for you as a company member of that special ensemble that Pina created over time that both you, Bettina, um, carry on? The time of Corona, did that give you some tools to handle it? How, how was the mood in the company? How did you deal all with it? Well, we tried actually to um, to communicate as much as possible. I, I invented a, a format that I called art meetings, which just developed because we had we had our company meetings, and then we thought, oh, it we can we can do it by Zoom. We can talk with each other, and we can maybe talk about topics and subjects that move us, that we think about, that are important to us. So we met. Um, I don't know, once a month, and we had these meetings, we had a coach uh, leading us through these discussions, because some of them were, were, were difficult, emotionally difficult, like we talked also about uh, racism. And so you had you a know, theme in the, they would, like you said, we do an art meeting, everybody yeah. of the, every 70 of them, also technicians, everybody. Um, well, in some, or, yeah, sometimes with the technicians, sometimes just the dancers. Give us um, a theme. And, what what and was there one was, of the themes? Well, well, like what, what Helena described in the beginning, how do we, I mean, what my, my, my main task as a director was, to take care of the heritage of Pina Bausch. It seems to be a simple sentence, but actually it's a big, big, big yeah. task. And it's a, a lot of responsibility. So we started to talk about with the rehearsal directors, but also with the dancers about their experience because Pina always wanted, as Helena just described very, very beautifully, um, the dancers to be themselves. She didn't want actors. She didn't want to have dancers. She, she really cut off this history of dance being a representation. So she wanted the people to see people on stage, to see themselves, which is not possible when you watch a classical ballet because the people are virtuosos uh, and they are, they are specialists. And you see, you can never then do this, these periods yourself. But when, when you watch Pina, you, can, you, you see normal people on stage. They were not supposed to act, to pretend, to perform. Um, she wanted them to be themselves and to, to deal with their own experience in life. And of course, to, to pass that to a younger generation, how will you do that? It's very difficult mm -hmm. to do it because they have to learn it as a role, of course. And then you have to make another step to find out how much of the experience that is part of this role, of this, of this part, of, she always called it places, in the, she never said roles, um, of this place in a piece. Um, and how much can this young dancer uh, contribute to this to this scene to this situation um, because if it's just repetition if if they just learn it by heart and and speak like a puppet it's not interesting anymore and it loses the impact it loses the excitement it loses the authenticity also of the pieces so we talked about that how do you feel and there were dancers who said well we think it's not such a creative process anymore and we would love to have a process that is where we can give our creativity into these roles into these places that we learn more than before so we discussed all these possibilities and one um one consequence of this was actually that we uh, that i invited uh, a young artist from tel aviv sama gal um, israeli a choreographer and next season we have Alan Oyen to help us to be there with us in the staging process and to to find a new approach together with the dancers and the rehearsal directors and try out if there is a way to um, to give the dancers a possibility or more possibilities more ways to to really add their own experience in life which might be different from the ones of Helena and her generation. So this was a very interesting uh, process that we had and that was part of these art meetings and uh, a lot of other things. And then of course we tried to, um, we made a concept, we had this so-called hygienic concepts that we had to make and we, started, we tried to, to stay in the studio um, even if it was just one rehearsal director and one dancer and we made it like, five sessions a day of one and a half hours we mm -hmm. had to get fresh air after 20 minutes open all the doors and 
it was a big um yeah it was a big organizational uh, um challenge also to 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 make it in a way and hope and and uh, thank god uh, we had not one infection till now so we we stayed all the way through the last half of the season and this whole season without one infection in uh, in the company or among the technicians or the, the colleagues in the in the offices in the direction and administration. Yeah, how, how symbolically important that is to keep yeah. something I think New York City Ballet shut down. Uh, they didn't use their spaces, their resources. And uh, and so did this time a question for both of you, is your company different after this time of Corona? Did it, did it speed up perhaps the uh, thoughts or ideas? Or do you think uh, actually we always thought, and this was a reconfirmation of our development or reinventing the company, but was this time a time of change, will it be? Or do you feel it was a pause? It was a, it was a time of thoughtfulness, I think. We, we talked much more because as Helena mentioned before, Pina never talked about anything, she worked. She worked on her pieces. She would never explain anything. She would never talk about the pieces, about the situation. She just had everybody come and work for hours and hours and hours. So I think this was quite new to exchange ideas and thoughts and talk about your situation and to also talk about your anxieties in this Corona situation. The, the, I, I tried to, to, um, to support the people and um, and let them really ask us questions and say, I'm sorry, I don't want to go to the studio tomorrow because I'm afraid I, I get infected and what can I do? And so we really try to be honest and open. And I don't know how, how much this is uh, mirrored from the company, but for me, I try to give them the, the opportunity to be open and to let us know what, what fears they had. And um, we always try to exchange also, is it good what we do? Do you feel safe? Do you feel we really take care of you? Or is there anything we, we could do on top of that? And that was a lot of our uh, responsibility, my, my colleague uh, Roger Christman and me, who, who direct the company, me as artistic director and him as administrative director so this was a big task and i was uh, i tried to be very honest with them and not um yeah not do something behind the closed door and then say okay that's the way we do it and um it was a long exchange and a very very detailed exchange about this whole corona consequences and also about our um not knowing what the future will bring we just said okay this is what we plan for next week for the week after in case the corona stays we have to do it this way in case it gets better we can go so far so it was a constant adaptation to the situation and the dancers i think and the whole company and the colleagues understood that this was the only way to to handle it always have a plan b c d and then find out which one will fit <laughs> And Bettina was very caring for us and we never feel like we have to, to do something if someone is afraid. It was always a possibility to, to explain and to say no for that I'm afraid. Also, while people were also trying to, to, <clears throat> to do some project, I mean also to, to just bring the idea on the paper and somehow we have also been uh, together for some um, times in a swimming pool outside, not to be near together, to be in the fresh air, but to always to also discuss together, to exchange, to give ideas, to even make some improvisation because it was a swimming pool where there's no water, you know, it was without water. <laughs> so yeah. it was, it was a, a, a moment, actually a, a bit in suspension for everybody, I suppose. But for us, it was also a moment where we could uh, think, release, some new dancers could have also have the time to really go on some ideas, crazy ideas, like Andre Beredzin, so for example, our Russish dancer, also long time with Pina, he was making a solo in a stadium in Wuppertal. It, it was great. It was cold, but he was there and it was really a, a great solo. So, and I think, yeah, it was the opportunity she gave us, uh, Bettina and also um, uh, Roger, but Bettina, I think, uh, more, give us the opportunity to, to try things, to think what we need, what we want now. It was like a little stop because we have to, 
but we, we could also imagine things and decide for later. And so now we are also ready. I think it puts also maybe somebody, some people together because we really want to find us together again in a studio, together again, not only online for the training, what was always organized, but that we really feel together now we can all. <laughs> Yesterday so you, we have been- You did, sorry, you did online training as a company. Yes. Every yes. day or yes. uh, once a week? Yes. Tell us a bit, how long and how is that organized? One hour was one, uh, well, one hour and a 15 minutes, maybe something like this, but it was even give some uh, pieces of uh, dance steppish, dance steppy. For dance, whom dance if, carpet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, dance carpet. Um, if someone wanted to have, uh, to, to be able to, to really work, if it's not easy on the floor you have. And it was, we have a really teacher with us really. And then we have found us together in the morning at 10 o'clock and uh, we have seen each other and we have worked together. So we have uh, do the bar at the kitchen table or everywhere <laughs> where you put it, holding a wall. Or, yeah, it's, it was something like this, but actually it was very good because it was possibility. So for the entire this. last year, every yes. weekday, <clears throat> the company rehearsed, checked in, so somehow saw each Absolutely. other. Mm, yes, incredible. So yeah. training was absolutely, absolutely possible. And for real thing, it was also like Bettina says, some, sometimes organized, but sometimes it should also stopped because the new regal from Corona was uh, one yeah. and one or one and two or nobody. <clears throat> and it, yeah, but it was also always possible to to do something in, in did you do a one-on-one -on -one? did you do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, by chance uh, by chance Elena? no by chance no because uh, when it was yes i have done one-on-one -on -one. yes absolutely. how did you feel how was that uh, for me it was very good because one-on-one -on -one, it was for shift uh and shift i am a direct uh, with barbara uh, kaufman uh, director artist i mean uh, lighter uh, how do you I love so director. Thank you, Bettina. <laughs> so for Schiff uh, with Barbara and uh, Julie Anstanzak also, an American dancer, uh, we are the three and we are restaging Schiff uh, near from Samagal also. And uh, it was very nice for me to work and to give my role to Tsai Shin. Uh, and this I really found it was incredible, very strong, and near together. Even we have been taking care not to be too near, we have a mask or, or we have uh, really care, care, caring about that. But it was very strong, maybe stronger uh, in, uh, as in another time because we have had this chance to be together and to really realize what it is now, this chance to be again together with one person, even with one person. And we have worked very, very beautifully. And I was so happy to transmit, to transmit my role. I love that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just what we have to do, I think. We, because this work should go on, have to go on and have to be passed. It's very important, mm. I think. And uh, it was fantastic for me. I just was very happy to do that. And sometimes I was going to look also as a rehearsal with, uh, when it was possible to be three, I was looking at Nazareth and Nayong. And so as a possibility, when it was a possibility, we have taken always the other possibility when it was. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. It sounds like one of the most successful um, engagements at the time of Corona of a company or an ensemble I have heard from um, around the world. So it's a very big ship, a ship or the bateau that uh, Bettina it's, and yeah, it's is called, scared. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a piece of um, of pinas that hadn't been done for 24 years. It's mm -hmm. called the piece with a ship. And yeah. uh, it's a huge ship corpus with a with a, a, sa a big sailing boat in a way and um, by Peter Pabst. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it has a lot of solos. It's a very dancey piece with a lot mm -hmm. of solos. Everyone has solos. And uh, as Helena said, we staged them in a way that that what is what I meant with adaptation to the situation. Whenever there was um, there was a, a way to to go into the studio, we said, okay, so you can do one by one. Um, the two of you can do the the 
the um, the duet but you you mm -hmm. apart from each you away from each other in a, a distance from each other but you do what you do you hug each other you do all the movements it was a totally different working process of course that everybody mm -hmm. had to adapt to and it was also i think very cre creative because they had everybody had to find new ways to approach this work and uh, and i think it opened uh, the view also and and the horizon to new ways of of working together and everybody was just happy to work at all and we had the difficulty um other than other companies maybe uh, who are run by a choreographer who could do they could all do solos duets or trios on stage with distance in between uh, create new pieces and and show them digitally on in inter on internet streaming or whatever mm -hmm. but penis pieces can't be streamed first of all the foundation will not allow us to do so um and uh, secondly i think that penis pieces are really not made for streaming because they are, there are so many actions going uh, simultaneously at the same time and you have to always decide whom to follow and you have to make a film about it and make a new film story of this piece but this is a whole big work very intense very time taking very uh, also very expensive so this was no option for us to say Absolutely. okay we go yeah. we, we we stream the pieces no problem um so we were not uh, actually not present in the internet anymore and what we did instead is what what um, helena just described we tried to work on the pieces as much as possible and to be ready uh, the moment the city or government would say, okay, you can open up again, you can open the, the, the opera house again, you can have like, instead of 75, uh, 750 um, spectators, you can have 200, uh, that we were ready to go on stage and show the, the repertoire. So that's what we did. We sort of kept it going and mm -hmm. kept it alive and, and we're just prepared for everything, which works for a certain time, but um, it's limited. After a while, you feel like you're working and it's all, you know, nobody can see it. It's all done as, as I call it, as a ghost performance. And, and it's not very satisfying for a dancer, mm -hmm. for an artist, I think, to do that for a long, long time. Yeah. So we really have like to, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're like a cloister they, setting, right? You know, you and, do and work, now we were actually, but you yeah. needed Pina Baus, Pina's yeah. ideas was to yeah. have the person as in absolutely us. and they th these pieces also need this exchange this communication with the public there are so many pieces where the dancers go into the public and talk with them show photographs uh, invite them on stage or invite them for a talk and the, so it's um yeah it's based on this communication that was pina's idea behind it as helena described you know that yeah and um, you, you, close you, to everybody. and it wouldn't really work on screen it's like saying a tintoretto yeah. painting you know which is yeah. like 20 yeah. feet by 30 feet and you yeah. have a little slide and you try yeah. have it in your hand yeah. and you yeah. try to in the old slide machine but how the yeah it gives you an idea how the painting looks, but has yeah. nothing to do with it um, one question, uh, Bettina, about this big boat, Pina Bausch Tanzler. How is it organized? You mentioned uh, the foundation there also, uh, Salomon Bausch, a wonderful, the son of, of Pina who runs a foundation. Then there is the city, I guess, of Wuppertal that supports it. And I know uh, Bettina Mills, um, who, and I think the, the, the state uh, itself is creating also a, um, a, um, a center. So tell us a little bit. Um, not for our American listeners to get envy or whatever, just to say this is a model that kind of yes. works. So yeah. to see how how are the beams of that house? How if you the, if it's a ship, you take away the wooden blanks, but how does it look? How is it structured? Could you give us? An well, it's it's very view? special in a way, also in Germany, because it's a it's a city um, uh, owned company. It's a GmbH Pina Bausch Tanztheater Wuppertal Pina Bausch. It's so not, city owned. I, I say yeah, again, that what does means, that mean? Yeah. That means that we get subsidy from the city, from the from the country, North Rhine-Westphalia, and we have to earn money to have income by touring. So it's like one third, one third for everything. Really, and, uh, one yeah. third touring. Really, yeah. that's that's a and, tough. Um, yeah. No, it's not. I think it's not exactly. It's like twenty. 20 something. But still, that's a lot. Yeah, but still, still, we have to tour to get uh, seventy people. Yeah. And yeah, and. Um, and that's special because you know the the German theater system is based on state theaters and city municipal theaters mainly, and um, but Pina got independent uh, and uh, 
I mean, the, the collaboration, as you, as you say, with the foundation, I mean, the foundation is the owner, the copyright owner holds the copyright on all the pieces of Pina. So what we normally do, Salomon Bausch and I, we I send him the, the, the plans for the next season and we talk about what do you think is important. I told him mm -hmm. that I would like to restage the pieces of the 70s because I think they are the, the somehow the, the source of, of Pina's mm -hmm. work. And you see so beautifully how she developed, you know, she started with these with this opera um, uh, dance operas by Gluck, Iphigenia and mm -hmm. Orpheus, and then Blaubart, which is a mm -hmm. very radical piece. Yeah. It's like um, it's like the, the opposite. The step that she made was enormous from the, the, the choreographing an opera and then suddenly do Blaubart, which is also an opera score and do it in a totally different way. It was a big scandal. And then um, she took Shakespeare apart, the, the Macbeth. Uh, he takes her by the hand and leads her to the castle the others follow. Um, so it's like a kaleidoscope of Pina's work and her ideas and also her, her thoughts about how to create new formats, no, new forms for dance, for the, the way she wanted to tell um, what she had to say and to, uh, to create a form that, that was not, no longer representative, but was a form that, uh, as Helena mentioned before, that was talking about everyday life, about people's emotions, about people's fears, about their failing, uh, their failures, about their, about their the mistakes, about uh, love and 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 uh, the the lack of love and all these things which were never uh, part of the of the ballets of the nineteenth century. They were just fairy tales, most of them, and um, so she was the one to. Um, to put dance on a totally different level, also mm -hmm. intellectually, although she wasn't an intellectual, I wouldn't call her an intellectual person, but she, um, I mean, it was like literature. It was so complex. I mean, every piece you can read like, like, a, like, a, like a piece of literature. There are so many layers on top of each other and not only one on top of each other, but um, it's like, it's like a, a network, you know, the whole piece with all these references to, to topics like in, I mean, the, the masterpiece I think is, uh, is, is Macbeth really, the way everybody is the victim and everybody is the murderer and everybody is Lady Macbeth. And, and um, it's, such a, it, it's such a complexity in these pieces, it's, it's, it's incredible. And um, so this is something that I talk about with with Salomon and, and he has a building as the foundation or he well, is in, yeah. in the theater or no, no, how, they have a they have a place um, close office, to us yeah. where they have mm -hmm. an office and all these uh, very special, as you know, very special rooms with uh, with uh, with, uh, with it has to be a special climate for all these um, uh, uh, photographs and, and videos the and, films mm -hmm. and the, the archive that he's responsible of. And uh, we have a very good connection, and um, and uh, but but it's not that uh, I mean we need the copyright of course always, but for mm -hmm. our everyday work it's not that we constantly work together mm -hmm. with the, with the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's just the. And do you have to say the city what you your plans are? Do they have to? Approve yes, we have. Yeah, we have. Send a letter like a, and. Yeah, we have a board of directors there. And, uh, but we have very good uh, communication with them and they're very supportive, everybody, also Bettina Mills and the ministry. Um, we're in constant exchange of everything that we do, that we plan and they support us very much. And they also support this, what I mentioned before, that, that we open up to many other things. We have a new education program because I think education of, uh, of young people and of the future uh, audience that we all need when we work in working in theater, um, it has to be a constant, uh, a constant um, uh, offer, a constant um, uh, possibility for pupils to come to work on pieces of Pina to to get to know her as a person, who she was as an artist. The exchange with the students from the Folkwang University uh, of the Arts. Um, in Essen, where Pina grew up in a way as a dancer and as a choreographer, um, the opening up also of uh, inviting a lot of external artists, what we do next season, we work with, with um, Anish Kapoor, who will hold mm -hmm. a lecture and uh, one of our artists that we invited, invited choreographers is Richard Siegel, he's an American, he's from 
uh, from Maine and he's working in Germany for a long time and he, um, he, he made a new piece in the installation of Anish Kapoor called Shooting to the Corner. And um, now another group is coming to get to know the company. It's Peeping Tom from Belgium, a group mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. both of them, Gabriela Carizzo and uh, Frank Chartier, they both said uh, they're one of the many, many, many artists that you mentioned in the beginning in your introduction who consider themselves be, having been extremely um, influenced by Pina's work. Uh, impressed by her work, but at the same time, they they somehow followed her path uh, and and developed their own art on the on this mm -hmm. ground that they found there. These new way of telling stories. Not um, um, what's the idea of the Pina Bausch Center? Is it like a place yeah, where you will invite the artist, or yeah, is it I mean, the archive, or is it no? This is uh, exactly retirement the... plans for dancers. What is it? <laughs> no, this is exactly. Um, the other end of what I was just talking about. Yeah. It, 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 it's supposed to become a place, an, a cultural center, an art center um, with, with four different um, members, collaborators. That's the uh, Tanztheater Pina Bausch, the company. It's a production uh, uh, center, um, which gives uh, commissions work to other people, to, to new artists, to new choreographers, but not, it's also interdisciplinary as Pina's work has always been. Um, then it's the foundation. They will be part and they will have their rooms there, their, their archive in this house and also work together uh, with the company and with the other members. And then also it's supposed to be a place for the civil society of Wuppertal, uh, communities, all kinds of, you know, we have a lot of immigrants. Uh, Wuppertal has, uh, um, has uh, 350,000 inhabitants and uh, about one third of them are from other countries uh, in the wow. world. I did not know and that. um, that's a lot. That is so a lot. this taking care of this and making possible that people can live together, know something about each other and, and get closer to each other um, is a big task also for, and, and a challenge for the city. It's not a rich city, not a wealthy city. And I think it's an enormous effort to, to build this house, the Pina Bausch Center, um, to have it really to have an international um, art center in this. So will be a building that in the moment yeah. does not exist? Yes, so it exists. It exists. Um, yeah, it has a little story behind it. It was the Schauspielhaus, what I mentioned oh, before. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It was a place where she created a lot of her pieces. Then both uh, both uh, houses, the Opera House and the Schauspielhaus, uh, had a lot of lacks in, in terms of uh, uh, fire, uh, in emergency situations, stuff like that. So they had to be renovated, both of them. But the city didn't have the money to renovate both. So they decided they give the money to the opera. The, the opera has to be um, had had been uh, restored and and everything made new the the, mm -hmm. the, the stage and everything and um, also the accessibility for handicapped people and everything and uh, they decided that they don't have the money to 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 do it with both houses so the Schauspielhaus had to be closed down and it was like really in a rotten uh, 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 situation already. And then they decided to make it, to, to close it down as a normal theater and make it a, a place for dance, which Perfect. was really the first time in Germany. What normally happened, I'm, I was involved in politics for dance a lot in the last 15 years. And normally we had to really suffer from uh, closed down companies, closed down dance, departments, um, but never ever has a Schauspielhaus turned into a dance, a house for dance. So that was never really Wuppertal the first time. And now we have the, the finances for it. Um, it's going to be um, paid by the, by the cultural department of the government of Germany, um, Nordrhein-Westfalia, the, the Ministry for Culture and the city of Wuppertal. And it's going to be open on 26, 27. And uh, at the moment, it's one of my jobs to really give a lot of input into how can the, can a place like that look? 
in the future what will be the the needs of the of the future generations how what will they ask from from art from dance and other art forms and we're discussing that a lot with people from the city with experts from all over the world and and mm -hmm. try to find best practice uh, examples also in other countries who already have, like we had a talk with uh, Kathy Levy from the uh, National Arts Center in Ottawa and with uh, people from Ghent, from Foruit, which is a big center, uh, with uh, Alistair Spaulding from uh, um, Settlers Wells in London and also German places to find out which is the best way to put these four um, contributors together and have them work on a repertoire and an open house that welcomes the world, but also the people from Wuppertal and not only artists, but everybody who wants to read a book, watch a film of Pina's work, uh, discuss things with other people, sit there and have a tea, uh, cook together, whatever, and see Pina's works on stage and, um, and new works from new choreographers. So a very alive and vibrating place um, and center in the, in the middle of Wuppertal. Incredible. This is a, such wonderful news to know that such places are developing and they will be coming out in the time after um, um, Corona. And uh, they, I mean, there are new places like Le Diamant. I think Robert Lepage is uh, opening that, you know, in Quebec. Yeah. It's a completely new center. Yeah. I think Tia Varsova in Poland, the great theater, they building in a very significant public space, a completely new theater. Um, where they also think about new media. So it will be really interesting what will come out of Europe. But as you point out, and this is also to your credit, but of course to the great Pina, um, that a Tanz Theater, a dance company, gets an entire building that a kind of the drama house has been shut down as an incredible uh, statement um, in itself and, um, and also shows how significant um, that work of the company is for the city. And there's nothing you can hope more for from an artist that the place where you are, and so many people talked about this in our talks, you know, that where you are, it matters that you reach out, that you are connected to the community, that the city says, you know, this is our company, we give so many resources. And actually also the city exactly. is known. They put but tell people, oh, isn't that where Pina Bausch's company is? So it's a, it used to be the that kind of high level magnetic uh, tra transportation system, but <laughs> Pina worldwide uh, took yeah. it over. Um, it's wonderful, or Karel Serebrannikov, and he talked about the Gorky uh, uh, Center in, in, uh, in Moscow, where he said, you know, we have one entrance, all the artists come in, the audiences come in, the yes. cafe opens at nine o'clock in the morning, it's a yes. meeting place, people can come and read, as you said, it's not the job of the kids to know about Chekhov, we have to help them, we have to Keep make it interesting, and, yeah. they, yes. all, they all stay after the performances, and I think we need this new energy, which brings me to a question, Helena, um, since you're so, so close to the soul of the work also, you know, as Bettina, of course, also is, um, everybody thinks about, at least here, what, you know, can we do better? What should be different? And I think Pina, like uh, Eugenio Barba, and so many others, which are, they had, she has found answers already. So I don't think we completely have to reinvent, but what do you think? And many artists also are listening. Sometimes we have, you know, 20 countries, people who listen to your young artists or people who are developing work. What are the experiences of the company of Pina Bausch or the work of Pina, where you say, if you start new, and, um, and Carol Sopranikov said, we have to start completely new. We have forgotten what we did. Just take the best, but we have to create something new. Or mm -hmm. uh, Sybil Kempson from New York artist last week, she said, you know, we found out there is no longer about the success. It was about, in a way, we, are we going to die or not? So who cares? So it's about our work together in the moment where we have to find meaning in it. So, but what do you think we can learn from Pina <clears throat> and your work that right. people should keep in mind? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I have just a word coming to me because uh, I don't know if it's really answering to your question, but it's something coming to me very strongly. Zenzucht, uh, desire, real desire to do things. This is Zenzucht in Deutsch, I cannot explain in English mm -hmm. so well because desire. there is some mm -hmm. special uh, feeling inside, special way. Longing, Not, desire yeah, in yeah. between, yeah. Yeah, I think it's very necessary to have this also and to 
to want to do things, to have this desire who are alive also, because it's not because of Corona or everything can come, war, war and everything can hit you and, uh, but even death, but uh, yeah, it's only the possibility to, to, to be in life, to have this feeling coming back and to really want it to do things and to have a force and to have force, to be strong, to, to, to want to live, to want to dance. I remember, I just, maybe I'm not really answering to your question. I'm, no, but no, I just, we are listening, yeah. I, I just remember when, uh, because it was happening some sometimes, uh, we have people dying in, in, in some moment from pieces from Pina, for example, Tenshi, the Japan co-production. And we have had three people dying at the time. We have had um, 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 Thomas Erdos, who was a very, very important person for Pina. We are looking, also, this person was uh, very much looking where he could bring Pina to, to let the people know Pina, the work from Pina. And uh, we have had also um, other friends from the technical dying. And uh, also in another time, we have had Manuel Alum dying. So it was a moment where Pina said, what can we do? What can we do? We just can dance. It's no other things to do. It just can dance. Don't talk, just dance. And it was very strong for her, this, uh, these things. And I think we have to, to find back our roots, our, our zenzot for living. And maybe like this, we will also respect more the, li the life from other people. If we find this back in our world. Because now life is sometimes so like just nothing and it's, it's not like that. It's nothing and it's, a, it's everything. Yeah. Just going like a little light like that coming here and then the little light goes away again. So, but this time between the beginning from the little light coming here and going away, it's so extraordinarily fantastic. And we have to do something like this. We have, yeah. <laughs> No, no, really. This is uh, important that we do something in the time and say dance and, you know, straight through to your scenes or to, um, to your desire or the longing for life. Um, Bettina, for you, what do you think can be transferred? Think, yeah. What the company does in strategies and thinking or drama to what they learn, you know, for the people? What do you think is something that people think, should keep in mind? I think talking about Pina and her pieces, um, she's I think what, what was so um, special and outstanding about her was this humanity that she brought in, on stage. You know, she, she, she didn't, um, she, she made the people um, not be afraid, you know, to talk about your personal failures, to talk about what doesn't work, to talk about your experience that you normally would hide behind a wall and not talk about it. And I think she was extremely empathic. And for me, this is uh, one of the means that we should develop again much more. Uh, in a Christian sense, maybe as uh, Nächstenliebe, I don't know the word in mm -hmm. English, but um, I'm not uh, love religious. Of the neighbor, at, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I'm not religious at all, but I think this is one of the, for me, the, the most important message um, also now in Corona times to, to take care of the other people, to see that there is somebody who is weaker than you and that you have to, to support and not just go and do, be successful and follow your, 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 your goals, but look le left and right uh, who is there with you. And um, I think this, what, what uh, Helena calls Sehnsucht is also this, this longing for being close to others, understand them, find out who they are, you know, and in a, in a time of, um, of um, this, these big migrant um, um, movements at the moment where people are coming from Africa to, 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 to Europe and from, from, I don't know, from, from India to us and the other way around. And people, it, we have to, to be interested in other people, you know, we have to, to be curious. Who are you? What are you? How, how are do you? How do you lead your life? What are you doing uh, when you suffer? And, and I think these are incredible, interesting uh, subjects also for art, of course, you know, to go deeper into all these emotions and the reasons for it. And um, I think that that is indeed a new way now, again, also politically, 
because we find out that all this uh, individual satisfaction maybe is not the only way to to go but we maybe have to look more into the community again and uh, find a way together um, against um, pandemics but also uh, against loneliness and um, and 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 poorness and and a lot of other and and also to save our planet it's a common common task it's a common challenge we all have to do it together it's not a task that somebody can do individually and i think pina has um also in the in the way she worked she created pieces this contribution of everybody on stage she never said okay do this step or make this scene or here's the dialogue you have to say it was the dancers actually who contributed with their experience with their lives with their individuality and then she made something out of it the way she she cut things she combined things she she made these big puzzle um out of all these individual little experiences and and adventures and what she always reached in the end of the pieces everybody was in love with everybody on stage in the end of the piece you know you had the feeling you want to get to know everybody all these dancers you want to know who they are you want to meet them and and um, and you had the feeling you're not excluded from what happened on stage even not from the disasters and the dramas and um, you were part of it and i think that was her her big um, uh, ability as an as an artist yeah and, and what a what a role model you know as you point yeah. out to um yeah. to really adapt that to our life after all this is about us and the audience and that was so important to her yeah. and the, what you said the uh, recognition that it so much in the western world especially is focused on the individual happiness or with one partner if i have that one then we i'm happy and, and we are finding out no maybe it's a group of people maybe it's your neighborhood your company the people who come from other places and you help them or you're in communication you share uh, some say you know the uh, a joyful celebration in the sorrows of life you know and and that that is closer and theater shows up in her work showed it in a dramatized moment on stage that and this is something to follow so it's a whole philosophy for our all own lives so it's incredible as a, as a final question will we see will there be a, a corona piece from a pina bausch company will there be a cafe miller in a row in in <laughs> corona because because who else but one could say could express yeah, that actually, better what what uh, is there something in the works um no but i think um as always artists um anticipate a lot of these uh, vibrations that are in the air um, and uh, actually now I've just given two commissions to two artists. One is a member of the company for a long time, Rainer Beer, who's also very much into choreography for years already. And um, I asked him to do to make a piece for the company um, for the big stage of the Opera House. And the other one is Richard Siegel, who comes from the tradition of uh, of William Forsyth. So they are like two endings on a, of a one of a long line, one very abstract tradition of new neoclassic and deconstruction, and Rainer Beer from this tradition of Pinas. And I saw both pieces now because they are almost finished, and we will um, show them in front of the public next season. We had to postpone them. And there you see that both of them, in a way, uh, talk about this um, isolation, this distancing, this um, this uh, yeah isolation of the of the people in a totally different way, uh, and with totally different means. But both have something like this um, unknown um, bedrohung. What is that in English? A threat. A threat, a threat. Yeah, yeah, an yeah. unknown threat that is there some, somewhere hiding uh, and for in both pieces this plays a big role it's a big challenge for the for the for the for the the dancers on stage and they 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 deal with this with this moment of being threatened by something that they can't really touch that mm -hmm. they can't really describe and 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 take into their hands but it's somewhere there outside somewhere and, there. and influencing yeah. them and and um 
uh, so it's in a way it's two corona pieces indeed but it it would never be named like yeah, like yeah that. but, like but it, it it show both pieces show very much this this threat um of um coming from the outside that you cannot yeah. influence because you're 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 uh, helpless uh, so it was facing this yeah yeah created in that atmosphere yeah, it of was corona created, yeah, yeah yeah and uh, helena um what are you what are your upcoming works what are you working on will you for the moment we are working uh, soon about a piece we are um, dancing i hope we hope in uh, september this and land uh, so uh, it's a co-production with uh, Hungary, Hungary, was a co-production at the time. Correct. So we we do it again, and uh, I just have the time, the holiday time, I will prepare myself because it's a hard piece for me. Don't mm -hmm. have a good job to do. <laughs> so a lot to do, pieces yeah. to prepare, uh, yeah. to rehearse, building uh, new centers, and um, and building a new community, building on what we already have. It's an incredible um, uh, what you guys, of course, already did. But also, I think what, what a wonderful idea to think about that every day of this last year and a half, you got together and rehearsed or at a, at a training that it, dancers use the space, even one on one, you know, uh, and um, that you keep thinking about the future and global collaborations. Um, as a side note, it, you know, it also shows what happens when dramaturgs are in charge of the <laughs> ship, you know, and not people who are trained uh, in marketing also, or a look at bottom lines, you know, they, that this thinking, uh, the reflection, uh, making connections, unusual connections of significance. And we have, of course, also great dramaturgs here. And Catania will bring out soon her book um, on dramaturgy where she followed companies and the work of many menaces. Catherine Profeta is someone who works a bit in dance uh, dramaturgy here uh, also in the US. And, but it shows um, really that it's an artistic engagement, intellectual engagement, but also a social engagement that, we, that works and that's important and that has, has an impact. Really, thank you both. This was so enlightening. This is so much more than I could have hoped for. Thank you for sharing or taking the time. I know how busy you all are and uh, to find the time to, for us to spend together. It was really worth it. I would like to thank Elizabeth Hayes. I think she was also part on, on or was on your board for a while and is still such a great uh, supporter um, to help them make the connections and um, and really all our respect and thanks, you know, from the World Theatre community to Tanz Theater, uh, Wuppertal, of course. You know, how wonderful it would be if Pina Bausch had talked to us, you know, but she talks to us through you, through your work. Uh, and we see administrators, people who run places, mm -hmm. they are artists like uh, Bettina, you know, they do the collage as a connection in this kind of enlarged understanding of an engagement of art and life. You know, they are very important uh, 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 pieces. And it's an, really, I think it's people should be encouraged, you know, to have a real dialogue also with dramaturgy. And uh, to see, you know, this is uh, something that perhaps has answers for a lot of questions. And um, and the world is thankful, of course, for the Tanz Theater that feel that Pina created. It did not exist in that way before. And we are so much richer for it. And we gave us meaning also in that hour listening to you, you gave us uh, something very special. So thank you both. And I hope to see you. I hope the plays, dance pieces will come to New York, the old ones, the new ones. And I can't wait to have a tea uh, in the Pinot Bausch Center and pick up a book <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, great. and see if the internet connection really works or not. Okay, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. Thanks Thank also. you. And Thank you very Salomon, much. Thank you very much for inviting us. Bettina, bye. the city, and the, everybody who supports you. What a great, great model to look at. Bye Thank bye. you very Thank much you. for the invitation, Frank. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you very bye much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.